Welcome to my channel. Today we have a art journal page that's going to take 30 minutes. I'm working in my DIY journal and I've made signatures with mixed media paper and half of it it measures six by six. So I'm going to use this napkin is called for Cynthia and birds. I rough cut the wreath around it. Now, when I've looked at this napkin, I thought you have to use the whole of it, but then I realized I can just have it going partially off the page and that's going to allow me to build some interest into the background, maybe add some texture. So I'm going to glue this napkin down, but I'm going to take off the two excess plies and position this on here. Now, the back of the napkin is white, and so it will go mostly translucent, but I want the edges to disappear even more, so I'm using my liner brush to water cut and get this deckled edge. This makes it less noticeable. And when I look at it now, you really can't see where the page ends and the napkin decoupage down begins. So I just use a little bit of water on a liner brush. You need a really little bit of water. You don't want to soak the napkin. If you get too much water on the napkin, just stop, let it dry, use the heat tool, and then continue. So I'm going to place this going off the page. Now, at this point, I'm thinking I'm only going to do half the one page, not the whole of it. So I want to protect the other half from getting all the paint on it. So I'm putting it in this sleeve and I'm applying some gesso and then I'm grabbing turquoise blue. And I'm going to mix that right on the mixed media card with a makeup sponge. I want a very light background. I don't, I'm going to want maybe a little bit darker at the top where the napkin isn't going to go. But underneath, I want just a hint of blue. This is going to represent the sky. And then I decide, you know what, I'm going to colorize the entirety of this. This is going to be two separate pages. So I'm really starting the next page or another page at this time, which means next time, if I don't have as much time to create, I already have it started. I like the modeled look here. It adds a lot of texture and an interest to the background. Now, because I'm working on a six by six, that's not a large space. You don't want a lot of stuff and you don't want a lot of competing stuff. And my focal image is quite big, but I do want to add some pattern and some texture. So this stencil is called Tropical Vibe. It's a new one from the Crafters Workshop. And I love that swirl motif. And I think that'll look good in the sky. So I'm going to use some light and fluffy modeling paste, also from the Crafters Workshop, and apply that to that part of the stencil. Remember, when you're using a stencil, you can select what parts of it you want to use. You don't have to use it in its entirety. But I love that swirl. I'm just applying this through here, through the stencil, with the palette knife. I should have grabbed a key card. I find I get it a lot smoother when I grab that, but I may do. So this I'm going to make sure that it dries. Now once it's dry, I'm going to use that same part of the stencil and do some stenciling with the turquoise. Now I'm not getting a whole lot of paint on the makeup sponge. I don't want this full, full strength turquoise, but I just want to add that same patterning on other places of the napkin. 
or other places on the background. So I'm putting the napkin there to see how far I want to go with these swirls. So I'm just building up the swirls using the stencil. Okay, so then check. Now I'm not, I don't want any of this dark, dark blue where the bird is because that's going to come through the napkin once I glue it down. And a little bit more up here. So I've used the same stencil in two different ways. Instead of introducing another competing pattern. And that's a good thing to do when you're working on a smaller surface. I decided to add some script and some black and I'm just using my black archival ink. And again, I'm not putting it where the bird is because I don't want this to show in some places. And then I decide I'm going to put the script stamp on the other side, on the other page. So now I have two different things there. And when I get to it, I'm going to create something completely different with that. I'm happy with every, where everything is, so I'm going to glue the napkin down with my fluid matte medium. I put a coat underneath, put the napkin down, and then I'm using a piece of saran wrap to get the wrinkles out. Then I'm going to put some more matte medium where I did not yet use the saran wrap in the same way. And once I'm happy, I'm just going to put a coat of the fluid matte medium on top. you can see the blue is very very subtle but it's not really discoloring the flowers or the bird which was the goal the yellow and blue work so well together of course they're across the color wheel from each other so I grab the brilliant yellow and my white gesso and I'm going to overpaint the flowers this is a very painterly approach. It's adding texture. And I'm really not overthinking this. And because I'm mixing a little bit of gesso with a little bit of the yellow, I'm getting different mixtures. So the shading has been taken care of. And we'll zoom in a little bit. I'm not even worried about perfectly covering all the petals there. This is just adding another layer and it's making it my own. So I just keep working my way around, trying hard not to get my hand in the wet paint. Combination gesso paint. I hope you give this technique a try. It's very effective and it's easier than it looks and you'll get better at it every time you do it. Flowers are great because the petals can be a multitude of shapes. So once that's done, I grab my hooker's green and mix that with, I still have some yellow on the brush, but then I mix it with the gesso and I paint the leaves. And this really darkens the leaves and really gives me that little bit of contrast that I need it. So sometimes you go with the exact same color that it was, but now you've added texture when you've globbed on the paint. And here I'm actually going a little bit darker so you can alter the color. I felt that it really made a difference when I added the green. And then I'm giving a wash of yellow to the bird 
and then I will be using some gray and some black just to build up the colors on it because remember that's the focal point you want the focal image to be what stands out the most I have to laugh this napkin I had actually pulled this napkin and others I was going through all my napkin collection and I pulled it as one that you know I don't it can go into the do something else with it pile and then it was sitting there and suddenly I got inspired to use it so don't give up on your napkins now I'm using my liner brush and some thinned brown paint to add the branches And I'm dotting the centers of the flowers because they were a little bit brown in there. So I'm just adding that in. And then I'm dotting the center with white. Now, if you forget or you don't remember what the uh, pattern looks like, you've got the rest of the napkin to look at as a um, reference point. So I was unsure what to do with the textured area in the corner so I decided I'm going to edge with black acrylic paint around this page. This will frame your picture and typically I do that with every page. And it really ties in with the black that's on the bird. Then I go to finding a sentiment. This is from my Winged Wonders sentiment pack. That's available for, digi for digital download purchase from Ninny's Napkins. And I'll put a link to that in the description box below. The sentiment was all together and I cut it apart to fit my composition. Remember, sentiments, you can shrink them, you can make them larger, you can cut them up, you can mix and match, you can use them, figure out a way to make them your own. And it says, let your dreams be your wings. I wasn't, I was undecided whether I wanted the swirls, the textured swirls to be blue or black. So I put on the blue, the tur same turquoise blue that I stenciled with to bring out the texture. And then I gave it a look and I decided I'm going to do black as well. And I like the two-toned look. I think it really goes well. This black ties in with the script stamp and the sentiment and the black that's on the bird and the blue ties it into the rest of the background. And I just have an ever so little bit on the makeup sponge that I pat off and then I'm just applying very light pressure, building up the color as I go. But I really like that two-toned effect and it added a really interesting effect. Now this is an art journal page, but this could have been a six by six card or a six by six canvas. And since I have more napkin, I just might end up turning it into one or both of those things. And that's the joy of using the napkins because you have multiple images to use. So if you try something out and you really like how it works, then you have, you know, and you can go and make multi-makes. I outlined the sentiment with my Posca pen and I'm using my General's charcoal pencil to outline the bird. And then I start on the leaves, adding some sketchy marks. Now remember, I put gesso and paint on the leaves and the flowers. That is texturized. So when I run the charcoal pencil off it, it's a very sketchy line. And I really like that effect. And it really helps bring the flowers to the forefront. This, for Cynthia and Bird's napkin, I will use the for Cynthia part, cut out the bird, 
water cut out the bird and I can put a different image in there or just use the Forsythia spray. So if you have this napkin, I hope I give you some ideas for how to use it. So now I have a partially started page as well as a finished page and I'm just going to put it back in the signature. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you give this a try. Check out the links in the description box below and until next time, go get creative.